Have you ever thought about opening your own bed and breakfast? Do you know what is required to operate a bed and breakfast? In this edition, I'm going to take a look at what you should do to start your own bed and breakfast. Welcome to another edition of Hospitality Property School. I am your instructor, Jerry McPherson. Does this sound like you? I have a nice house, live in a lovely location, and I'm interested in making extra money. I should open a bed and breakfast. If so, you're not alone. It is possible to find bed and breakfasts in almost every corner of the world. But where do you start? Well, before you start, you should ask yourself a few questions. Is my home really in a suitable location? What makes my home unique or captivating? Is my family ready to have strangers stay in our house? To do this, you have to be objective and look at it from the traveler's or tourist perspective. Ask friends or family for their opinions. Do I have the money needed? Will there be renovations required in your home to make sure the operation works well for you, your family, and your guests? Are the rooms going to be theme designed or with a certain furniture style? You might need new or more furnishings. Do I have the time or the skills needed? It's a good idea to talk with other bed and breakfast owners or experts in the hospitality industry to get a feel of what this undertaking might entail. Do I like being with people? Are you a good host, enjoy conversing, and have strong listening skills? Do I take pleasure in keeping a tasteful and clean home? You know what it's like when you go to someone else's home and you see dirt in the corners or clothes piled up? It's not very appealing and it's a good way to lose return clientele. Am I organized? And what I mean by this, are you able to keep up reservations, design and keep schedules, managing, accounting, bookkeeping, understand and do marketing, research the demand and competition. Do I have realistic expectations? You have to know this is not going to be a get rich quick operation and the hours can be very long. These are a few basic questions you should ask and answer before moving forward. Please do not look at these questions as a deterrent, but instead a way to set reasonable expectations into what can be a really fun and rewarding career. After a word from our sponsor, I'm going to share with you more things you need to consider before opening your bed and breakfast. Do you have an independent hospitality property, a hotel, resort, inn, or bed and breakfast, and at times feel overwhelmed with all you have to do? Do you find yourself doing everything from checking guests in, to marketing, to looking for the right people to work for you, to cleaning toilets and everything in between? What happens when things become hectic? Do you feel stressed? Do you find it difficult to plan for the future when your only concern is how to get the rooms ready for the new arrivals? So what can you do? You have to get organized. You have to learn the strategies that will make you more effective. Wouldn't it be great to learn the techniques the big brand hospitality properties use and to work like you have a full organizational structure supporting you? If the answer is yes, your next question might be, how do I do this? Well, if you can make the time and have the extra funds, many universities and colleges offer hospitality training programs. Or you can learn from those who've gone through all your problems and see how they have streamlined their business. You can do this by becoming a member of the Hospitality Property School Group. The benefits of this group include helping your hospitality property to gain a clear vision, help set up your organizational structure, help set up your brand, help your social media strategy, help create an atmosphere to hire the right employees, help grow your business. The Hospitality Property School Group is designed to share knowledge, tips, and techniques to like-minded hospitality property owners and managers who might not have the benefit of having an entire organization to support them. If you are looking for ways to streamline your business, learn how to set up an organizational strategy, to hire and keep the right employees, and to increase your bookings and profit, then visit keystonehospitalitydevelopment.com 
forward slash membership hyphen site and explore the Hospitality Property Group for an entire week for only $1. We guarantee you'll find tips and techniques that you can begin using right away to help start improving your bookings and profit. But don't just take my word for it. Explore yourself for an entire week for only $1. That's keystonehospitalitydevelopment.com forward slash membership hyphen site. You've got nothing to lose and everything to gain. Before the break, I said I was going to share with you more things you need to consider before opening your bed and breakfast. If your responses so far have been positive, you might think you are ready to put a bed and breakfast sign in front of your property. Not so fast. You next have to find out what forms and permits are required to open a bed and breakfast. Wouldn't it be great if all you had to do to operate a bed and breakfast was to open the doors to weary travelers and invite them in to enjoy your hospitality. Unfortunately, it's not that simple. There's business that has to be taken care of before you even consider inviting in your first guest. A bed and breakfast is a business, so making sure all your I's are dotted and T's are crossed is essential. You don't want government officials knocking on your door while you're serving oatmeal. To ensure everything is done correctly, talk with and use your professionals, your accountant, lawyer, consultant, and or broker, as well as other bed and breakfast owners. Make sure you have the accounts and paperwork you need before your opening day, and it's a good idea to mark any necessary renewal dates on your calendar. Here's a checklist you can use as a guideline, but remember, it's just a guideline. Your location may require different or additional forms or permits. Business license. Registered business name. Certificate of occupancy. Conditional use and sign permits, if required. Account for transient or lodging taxes. Sales tax account. Federal and sales or provincial tax ID. Business checking credit accounts. Merchant accounts to process debit and credit cards. Health department inspection. Fire department inspection. Food services certificate. Insurance, business, liability, property, and liquor liability if applicable. Property management, reservation, and accounting. Liquor license if applicable. Now, as I said, these are just guidelines and you have to consult your local professionals to make sure you have all the proper forms and permits. Does this make sense? Let me know by leaving a short comment. Download your own copy of the Permit and Forms Checklist and the Service Numbers Suggestions. Once you have all the proper forms and permits in place, you should compile another list. So it does not matter how organized we are. There are times when something could happen that will catch us off guard and we are not sure who to call. Record telephone numbers for the following services and keep the list on hand for quick fixes to ensure your guests comfort, enjoyment, safety, and your peace of mind. Animal control, appliance repair, cable provider, carpenter or contractor, electrician, heat and AC equipment person, hot tub repair, internet provider, landscaper or tree removal service, plumbing and drain cleaning service, power company, propane gas supplier, phone service provider, roofer, septic tank info, snow removal service. Some of these contacts may not apply, or you have others I have not included. But this is a good list to start with, and if you do have others, we would sure like to hear about them. In conclusion, asking the right questions, doing the research, and getting proper permits and forms in place needs to happen before you can open your doors to the world. Take the time, as it could save you massive headaches down the road. Do you know about the six-day challenge? We want to challenge you. 
The Six Day Challenge is a free video series with many actionable tips and techniques that you can take and use to help improve your property's patronage and profit. Whether you're operating a one room bed and breakfast or a 500 room luxury hotel, there's always something new you can learn. Never stop learning because life never stops teaching. It is important as a hospitality property owner or manager that you never stop learning. So what have you got to lose? Are you up for the challenge? Sign up below to get immediate access to the first video. If you like this video, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and if you're going to employ any of the procedures. You can support this free podcast by leaving us a review and giving a five-star rating in the Apple Podcast Store or wherever you happen to be listening to it. Every review helps more people find the podcast. If you know someone who might gain from the video, go ahead and share it. Make sure to hit the like button. All feedback is appreciated. If you haven't done so yet, make sure to subscribe and hit the little bell so you're notified when I upload a new video. Thank you so much for your attention, and let's continue to work together to put heads in your beds. Until next time, have a fun day. We will see you next time, right here in Hospitality Property School.